Dear audience, let me present you my PhD topic, Metabolic Changes in Pancreatic Disorders. I'm Monica Lip, a PhD student and a gastroenterology resident at Semmelweis University. And my personal vision is to take action on the quality of care. Here you can see our ongoing project. First, we want to investigate the connection between fatty pancreas and pancreatic cancer in the form of systematic review and meta-analysis. In our second project, we try to understand the connection between the metabolic syndrome and the pancreatic disease progression. So this is our first project on fatty pancreas and pancreatic cancer. It is known that pancreatic cancer takes the first place among asymptomatic cancer. Moreover, only 10 to 17% of the patients will live five years after the diagnosis. Uh, it is known that pre-existing metabolic disorders can contribute to the development of pancreatic cancer. And there is a link between fatty pancreas and pancreatic carcinoma. But what is fatty pancreas? Fatty pancreas is a fat infiltration to the pancreas, mostly due to obesity, presented in 30 to 35% of the patients. Or in what to detect the association between these two entities. Here you can see the imaging methods. So about 6% fat content in the pancreas is normal. The gold standard method is histology, but most of the studies used EUS as a diagnostic method. And you can see the fatty pancreas with the blue arrow and the spleen with the orange one, because uh, at the EUS they are comparing the pancreas to another organ. Some studies used CT and some used MRI. We wanted to know if fatty pancreas predisposed the development of pancreatic cancer or not. We included patients where the intrapancreatic uh, fat deposition was determined based on uh, modern radiology or histology, and our main outcome of interest was the prevalence or the ratio of fatty pancreas with the hypothesis that fatty pancreas increases the risk of pancreatic cancer. We conducted our systematic search and selection in three databases with the search key you can see below. After our search and selection, we ended up with 17 eligible articles. Here you can see our results. So we here investigated the presence of pancreatic cancer among patients with fatty pancreas. I would like to highlight that the early detection is really important because patients mostly present at the late stage of the diagnosis. And there is a forecast that pancreatic cancer will be the leading cause of all cancer deaths worldwide by 2015. So here we investigated that how many patients had pancreatic cancer in the case and in the control group. We used odds ratio with 95% confidence interval cross-sectional and case controls, retrospective and prospective studies were included. And the odds of having pancreatic cancer among patients with fatty pancreas was 32%, which clinically could be relevant, but it's not mathematically proven. That's why we asked, what if like fatty pancreas later can progradiate to pancreatic cancer? That's why we changed over the question to see the real connection. So here we investigated that how many patients with uh, pancreatic cancer had fatty pancreas. And it's not just only 32%. The probability was more than six times higher compared to the control group. It's clinically significant and it, it's also mathematically proven. So the connection is there. The implication for practice is that, that the measurement of the fatty pancreas should be included in the routine radiological examination and further prospective observational studies should be carried out. Here we investigated the proportion of fatty pancreas among patients with pancreatic cancer. And you can see that the heterogeneity was quite high because sometimes they included patients who underwent EUS for various kind of hepatobiliary indications. And in the other case, they included patients who had pancreatectoduodenectomy for pancreatic carcinoma. Here you can see that the prevalence of fatty pancreas among pancreatic cancer patients 
was 62%, which means that we can find fatty pancreas in more than half of the pancreatic cancer patients. We were able to strengthen the connection between fatty pancreas and pancreatic carcinoma, and it was the first meta-analysis conducted with strict methodology. However, we had to deal with some limitations as well. These are the heterogeneous patient population and the mostly retrospective nature of the studies. In conclusion, fatty pancreas predisposes to the development of pancreatic cancer. And I would like to highlight that the probability of having fatty pancreas among patients with pancreatic cancer was more than six times higher compared to the control group. The implication for practice is that the measurement of the fatty pancreas should be included in the routine radiological examination and the definition of the fatty pancreas should be unified. The implication for research is that the prospective uh, observational studies should be carried out. Here you can see the current status of our manuscript and we are planning to submit it in the next month. Regarding to my second project, we try to understand the metabolic syndrome and how it contributes to the development of pancreatic diseases. So, first, we know that uh, metabolic syndrome and diabetes contribute to the development of acute pancreatitis, but we don't really have so many information about what happens after an acute pancreatitic episode. So, how the metabolic syndrome contributes to the progression to other different pancreatic diseases. We have a goulash and a goulash plus study, which uh, patients get high energy or low energy formula, and these patients are followed up in our clinics. That's why we have a unique patient population to be followed up and uh, check the metabolic syndrome in that way. Uh, on admission and peak in hospital glucose levels are independently and those dependently associated with AP severity and mortality. Here you can see that BMI above 25 increases the risk of severe acute pancreatitis, while BMI above 30 increases the risk of mortality. We wanted to know that what are the factors that contribute to the development of different pancreatic diseases. We will uh, examine patients from the GULASH trial and our main outcome of interest is the ratio of newly developed pancreatic diseases. The clinical implication could be the prevention of these uh, pancreatic uh, diseases. So uh, now we are ready with the first uh, data retrieval and we are in a constant discussion with the statistician and uh, we will evaluate the dietary questionnaire as well, so we check these parameters. In conclusion, I would like to highlight that the probability of having uh, fatty pancreas among patients with pancreatic cancer was more than six times higher compared to the control group. And in our second project, we tried to understand the different parts of the metabolic syndrome and how it contributes to the development of pancreatic diseases. Well done is better than well said by Benjamin Franklin. Thank you for your attention. What do you think is fat? causing pancreatic cancer or pancreatic cancer causes a fatty um, disformation of the pancreas? Thank you for your question. So regarding to our uh, current knowledge, uh, there is a study from uh, Takayashu. Uh, it was published in 2018 and it's uh, examined like uh, Syrian golden hamsters and uh, all of the hamsters got BOP, it indicates pancreatic cancer uh, in, uh, in hamsters. And one of the, of the group get like a fatty diet, high fat diet, and the other group was like on a regular uh, diet. And after a couple of weeks, um, the incidence uh, of pancreatic cancer was 80% of the normal diet group and 86% of the fatty uh, diet group. 
and they also measured the pancreatic fat content in uh, in hamsters and it was like uh, um, about uh, 27 compared to 40 percent so based on these data we can suggest that the connection is like fatty pancreas and after pancreatic cancer we know this this kind of model of disease progression from hepatology where there's fatty liver, non-alcoholic cell to hepatitis, hepatocellular carcinoma. So you are suggesting that this is the same sequence of events leading to, pa to some of the pancreatic cancers we see. Uh, there are uh, articles which are comparing these two entities, like how is it similar, like the, the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and non-alcoholic fatty pancreatic disease. But uh, yeah, it, it can be... Uh, compared but uh, I would like to highlight that the fat content is in like different uh, parts so when you are speaking about the fatty liver disease the fat content is within the hepatocytes and uh, in this fatty pancreatic story the the fat content is in the intralobular space so not within the the cells so we can like uh, sum up these these two entities, but uh, I also want to highlight the differences. I would like to ask you whether uh, you have any information about the Hungarian data. I mean, uh, do you have any information about the incidence of fatty pancreas uh, in Hungary? Yeah, t thank you. So uh, as I mentioned, it's uh, not required to include like the pancreatic fat content or uh, is it a fatty pancreas or not in a in a like a routine radiological examination that's why i haven't found like uh, studies in hungary which uh, are uh, examining this um, fat content but um, in general we can see that uh, we can find like fatty pancreas in the obese population more frequently and as you know the hungarian population and the, the obesity is uh, so there are it's a <laughs> connection so uh, based on that i i think that the hungarian data it's uh, above like the the national average like fatty pancreatic data because it correlates with obesity I have a question regarding your second project. Maybe you mentioned it, that is there any uh, time period where you are uh, collecting the data? So is there any follow-up? Yes, yeah, so uh, we are following the patients from one to, to three years and we see that at the one year uh, follow-up there are much more patients than at the, the third year. But um, in these three years we have the most uh, patients so that's why we we chosen to analyze the data from uh, year one to year three.